Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the Exile Club and welcome to another Exile video. In today's video, we are going to solve a problem where somebody wasn't able to get their sum if x function working properly. They said they just didn't understand what they were doing wrong, that they were trying to sum with two criteria. They had selected the sum ifs, the sum if s function, but it just doesn't seem to work. So they've sent me over the workbook and I'm going to go through the formula that they wrote. We're going to correct the formula and I'm also going to show you some alternatives that they, they, they could have used to come up with the same solution. But before we get stuck into this video, I do hope that you will subscribe to my channel, hit that notifications button so you don't miss any more of my videos. I hope you'll also give this video a big thumbs up and share it across your social profiles. So let's hop in and have a look at the data. So this is the sheet that he was stuck on and he has the employee name. He wants to be able to put employee name down here and the date across here. And from there, he wants to jump into his timesheet and in his timesheet, he wants to get the total of the hours. Now the timesheet is set up as a table and the table is actually called timesheet. It has a column for employee and it has a column for date. And these are the two criteria that we want to sum between the errors. So his selection of the formula sum if s was actually the correct formula. But what has he actually done wrong? Well, I'm going to press F2 to go in and edit this formula. Now I see when we go in and we edit this formula, that we have some cell references and we have some table references. I can see with this cell reference, we have a dollar sign. It's been absoluted across the columns. So that means when you pull it across the columns, the value is not going to move. However, if we take a look at this cell, which is one cell above, this cell is relative. It has no absolute, it hasn't been locked in. So when you drag the formula, the value is also going to remain relative so it'll always be one spot ahead let's go in and have a look below we can see that the date has dragged down to the field below so there's definitely a problem with this we need to lock in this cell reference and we need to lock it in so that when we pull the formula down it will remain in place but when we pull the formula across it is going to continue to move so let's go back into our formula in the cell C3 and I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the two. Now you can flip between dollar signs by pressing the F4 button. F4 is going to lock the cell reference in no matter what way you pull the formula. It's locked in in all directions. That cell will never move. If you have the dollar in front of the row number when you pull it down the rows, the cell is always going to stay absolute to the rows. But when you pull it across the columns, it's going to move with the columns. And we've seen with the previous value, if the dollar, and just by pressing F4 again, we can move the position of the dollar. If the dollar is in front of the column letter, when we move it across the columns, the cell is going to remain locked in. But if we move it down the rows, it will move. So we want to have the dollar in front of the row number. So I can hit enter there. And now when I fill this formula down and across, we should have a little bit better look with making sure that that value has been locked in and it has. So the problem now is if we look at our formula, let's go into this cell here. Our first cell, we can see the timesheet hours, timesheet employee. And this changes to timesheet class and timesheet date. Because when you're working with tables, you also need to lock in columns when you're working with tables. So it's different to locking in cell references. You don't use the dollar symbol. Let us go in and I will edit this formula and I'll show you what we have to do. So to make this absolute, we need to add another square bracket around the first hour, a double dot, and in square brackets, we need to add a second hours and close that with the square brackets. Then we need to close a second square bracket. We need to do this with each of the columns that we want to be locked in 
when we fill the formula across. So we have locked in the errors because we want to always sum the errors column. We're also going to lock in the employee. So I'm going to take a copy of employee. I'm going to put in my double dot and I'm going to add in the square brackets around it. So it has all the square brackets. So each employee is in a square bracket and the two employees with the double dots between them showing that it's a range that is, is locked is ra also wrapped in square brackets. So then we'll take this date. I'm going to add this in as well, also in our square brackets and we'll add additional square brackets to this. And now when we fill our formula down and across, let's just fill it across one. We're getting a number in here. We see that hours has stead, employees has stead, and the date column has also remained in place. So now we have our correct formula. We can go ahead and we can fill and we can copy our formula across and we should be able to get all the values that we need. Now, what was said to me was that this was going to be a manual process that was going to be used as a check and a control. But a manual process for a check and a control can be subject to human error. They, there can be omissions, there can be mistakes. For example, if there is additional employees, their figures won't be in here and the, so the totals won't match up. So how also the dates, he's manually entering in the dates by having a start date and then adding one. So what alternatives could he use? Well, I suggested that he inserted a pivot table. So I'm just going to go insert and insert a pivot table from a table or a range. And I'm going to go to a existing worksheet and I'm just going to plop our pivot table in here. So now with our pivot table in here, if we put in our name, our employee name, if we then put in our date, and if we put in our date going across the columns, I'm going to remove the months, and then we can put in the hours. And quite quickly, we have created the same data that we have up here. However, the difference between this is it's not a manual process. When the detail of the actual table updates, all we need is a simple refresh on this, and this will also update. So we can see there's only three employees here, there's four employees, so it's very easy to make clerical error doing it the original way. Now, another way that can be done is to use some dynamic arrays. Now, using dynamic arrays, you're still going to need to use the sum if s function. So let us go ahead and let us do this by dynamic array. So first of all, I'm going to say unique and the unique I'm going to go to is on our timesheet and I'm going to take the unique of our employee name. I'm then going to take the unique. I'm going to take the transpose, the unique, and I'm going to take our dates. And that will give us all of our dates. Now I'm going to change this format to a date format. So home, I'm going to change the format here to a short date. So now all we need to do is to create one formula using the same sort of formula that we created here. Using one formula, we can write to populate all of these cells and it will be dynamic because it's a dynamic array. So like the pivot table, when the data updates, this is also going to update. So how can we write that? Well, we can say the sum if s, and the sum if s is first looking for our sum range. Well, our sum range is in our table and it is going to be our hours. And I want to lock that in. So I'm going to add in our double dots and I'm going to add in another hours. Now I'm going to take my criteria range one, which is going to be my employee. I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to add in a second square bracket, my double dots, paste it in, close the square brackets on this one. And our employee is going to be equal to, and we are going to, instead of just taking this value, we're going to put in the 
hash symbol afterwards and this will take the array that's built from the dynamic array so it'll keep it updated now we still do need to lock this value in so we are going to put the dollar sign in front of the b now we need to go to our criteria range two and our criteria range two is going to be our date column so we'll select our date column double dot i will say date and i will close the square brackets on that and we will say that is going to be equal to and over onto our sheet i will take our array again and we are going to lock that in so we will put the dollar sign here and then we can close our bracket and we can see our dynamic array has very quickly created the same values that our pivot table has created now the person that actually sent me this problem was my brother so i was able to just send him back these three different solutions and explain to him where he went wrong and let him pick i knew he was using excel 365 only those with excel 365 can use the dynamic array feature anyone can use the pivot table and anybody can use the sum if s function now some of you may be familiar with this workbook because he sent it to me before with a problem where he wanted to pull in these errors here but he wanted to have multiple lookups so he wanted to be able to look up this column, this column, this column, and this column to return the corresponding values. And I had put out a challenge. Now, if you want a copy of this workbook, or even if you'd like to try that challenge, you'll find a link below this video to the blog post that contains this workbook. So do hop over and have a look. Do you have an alternative solution? If so, please do drop a comment below. So that's it for today. I do hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so now. Thank you very much and goodbye now.